Greetings, YouTube universe, and welcome to the Paulo Deepika live stream. Today, I shall teach you about the horror chart. How to read the horror chart. <clears throat> if I can actually talk. Um, horror, right? Horror is where you take one sign and you split it in half into two divisions. It's the basis for the word hour because each hora takes one hour to rise over the eastern horizon. One classical hour. And in fact the word horoscope is originally meant determining what hour it is. So the way horas work is that some of the signs, Aries, Gemini, Leo, etc., are male. And some of the signs, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, etc., are female. Each sign, both male and female, <clears throat> gets split in half. And the first half of every sign is the same gender as the sign. And then the next half is the other gender. And the genders are expressed as sun and moon, solar, lunar. So, for example, the first half of Aries is male or solar. The first half of Taurus is female, lunar. First half of Gemini is male. First half of uh, Cancer is female. And then the second half is always the opposite. So, how then do you evaluate how a planet acts in Ohara? Because the Ohara, in this this classical way of doing a horror the horror doesn't have any signs now there's another way to do a horror which makes it more uniform like the rest like the navamsha um i don't know where it's defined it might not have been defined until relatively modern times but regardless of when or where it was defined the idea with this other kind of horror is the first half of Aries is Aries, the second half is Taurus, and then the first half of, you know, then you go, you just go sequentially. So you'll just repeat the zodiac two times. <clears throat> so the first half of Aries is Aries, the second half of Aries is Taurus, the, then the next sign, Taurus, the first half is Gemini, the second half of the, Taurus is the fourth Hora, so it will be Cancer, the fourth sign. That is not the classical definition <clears throat> of a Hora, but Many people like to use it, myself included, at times. Because it's just so much more easy and more familiar and you get a 12-house subchart when you collect all the horrors, like you're used to. But it's not really the way that horror was conceived by the Greeks or by used by the ancients or recorded in any of the Sanskrit astrology texts. The way that it is recorded in all those places is it's a male and female, a yin-yang kind of balance in the zodiac where you have half of the signs male, half of the signs female, and then you split the signs into half, and each half is either male or female within the sign. So within Aries, the first 15 degrees is male, very male, because the sign is male and the half is male. The second half of Aries is not so male, not as male, because although the sign is still male, the horror is female. The horror is lunar. Then when you get into Taurus, the first half is really lunar. It's very female. But the second half is not so female because it's got the aura becomes male or solar. See, that's the original definition of this thing. But it leaves us with the question of how the hell do we utilize this? Because, I mean, if Jupiter is in Cancer, it's debilitated. If Jupiter is in, I'm sorry, if Jupiter is in Capricorn, it's debilitated. If Jupiter is in Cancer, it's exalted. If Jupiter is in Gemini, then I take the, the relationship between Jupiter and Mercury, the Lord of Gemini. I know how to do that. But what do I do if Jupiter is in the sun's hora in a male sign versus if Jupiter is in the moon's hora in a female sign versus if Jupiter is in a mixed one? Thanks, Bash. Right? How do we do this? So today, Paul Deepak is going, to, is going to explain how you do it. And I would like to give you a disclaimer. Don't blame me if the technique isn't a miracle drug. 
because everybody expects always that every technique will be perfect on its own and if it's not perfect on its own it must not be a great technique no technique is really perfect on its own every technique is a part of a puzzle you have to use all kinds of techniques simultaneously on a chart so what you're what we're learning today is really how to assess the dignity of a planet in this particular varga the hora don't expect that that's going to answer every single question about the chart and provide the accurate picture of the person any more than the dignity of a planet in any subdivision would do so and no less than that okay so don't mistake i'm not saying this is an amazing one-shot technique <clears throat> that will tell you your future this is part of the dignity calculation this is part of understanding the planet's dignity and what i will say is that since each division has its character right each way of dividing a zodiac zodiac sign has its own character or inclination for example dividing the zodiac sign into nine has the inclination of showing you about dharma the, which means the person's inherent nature and their integrity dividing a zodiac sign into three shows you about the person's virya or power and bravery and strength Dividing a zodiac sign into two tends to show us about the person's dana, which means wealth. So this particular dignity that we're going to learn how to read today seems to be more pointed towards talking about if the person is wealth-oriented and, you know, yeah, money-oriented, wealth-oriented. All right? Any questions there? That's all the backstory and all the disclaimer before we jump into how to read the horror chart. Got any questions? Get them up on the chat now. Hello, Samurai Mama. Hello, Alf. Hello, Tango. Taigo. I have not seen you before. Welcome. Tatiana, Mary, and Dreaming Snail, and Bash. And S. You can't ask unrelated questions, but that's called Sunday, yes. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready? Hi, Seema. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's figure out how to read this horror chart. Uh, there's also like an Egyptian horror or something. I don't think it's un unrelated, but it's... You know, the sound always reminds me of Iron Maiden songs about the Eye of Horus. All right, here we go. Here's the definition of the technique. Okay. O J Kruerka Horam Katavati Balavan Kruravriti Dhanadhyo Yugme Chandrim Subheshu Juti Vinaya Vacho Shritya Saubhagya Yukta Vyastam vyaste tramishre samapalamuditam lagna chandra bhalishto tannatao dvao chatadvat yadi bhavati chiram jeev yadhuki yashasvi. Meaning of this beautiful bunch hunk of sound. The meaning, first of all, the blue line. He says, Malefics in male signs and the sun's horror indicate power and wealth gained through toughness and strength. So actually, look at what he's doing. This is a very interesting system. And it's actually, like all of the real genuine astrological techniques, very organic and natural. What he's saying is, if you get a... What he's saying is, male and female. Male is tough female is gentle so now that is going to vibe or gel with benefics or malefics because malefics are tough and benefics are gentle so what he's saying is if you take a malefic and you put them in the tough parts of the hora then they shine and if you take a benefic and you put it in the gentle parts then it's going to shine and the way that it's going to shine is always danadio which is the focal point of the D2. The focal point of the Hora is dana or wealth. So bear that in mind. 
I, I believe that the whole dignity of D2 is really oriented towards showing how wealth oriented you are or what you can use to get wealth wealth and wealth doesn't mean some fancy spiritual definition of wealth wealth means wealth green paper bills um, in America green so malefics if they're in a male sign malefic will be more st more strong more tough it has confluence it has synergy it's a male and it's in a male kind of place and furthermore if within the male sign it's in a male hora then the malefic becomes a really good malefic you see malefic doesn't mean bad malefic means malefic which means tough not forgiving that's what malefic means cruel means not forgiving so if this unforgiving planet is in a tough place both times, in a sign and in the horror, then it's going to be really good as a toughie. So he says then it's going to get Bolivan. Bolivan means it's going to get really strong. And Krura Vritti, it will be able to do Krura things, malefic things. It will be able to do effectively, right? Malefic things means taking from other people, punishing other people, um getting what you want, being hard, being uh, dedicated, being sharp, not giving up, being unrelenting. That's are all qualities of malefic. If you don't have these qualities, you don't get money. Nice guys tend not to get rich. But selfish bastards tend to get rich. Right? <laughs> So you get that selfish bastardness in a good way from having strong malefics. But in a good way, I mean in a productive way that actually is going to be successful for you. Where you can take things from people and you can figure out how to get stuff. So he's saying, Oje kru reir kahoram, ar kahoram. If it's in sun's hora, gatavati balavan, then it comes strong. Kru avritti. And it can do cruel things, like it can use toughness, it can use strength, it, it can take stuff. Dhanadyo, and that's how it gets powerful and wealthy. So like I said once before, power, wealth, money, and all that that's all malefic stuff. And if you want to be powerful, wealthy, and all that stuff, then you need strong malefics. And one of the most important ways to get a strong malefic in this way is to get the malefic in a male sign and a male hora at the same, in the same way, in the same time. So like the first half of Aries, the first half of Gemini, the first half of a male sign. Now, I wonder if you can guess what the light blue line is going to be. Yugme Chandrim Subheshu. It's going to be the opposite. It's going to talk about benefics. I'll check and see if there's any interesting questions there. Uchira, nice to see you. Oh, every software will calculate in the classical way. You may have to just check the options. I I think the one that's not classical is called IYER. I-Y-E-R. And some software, actually these days a lot of software, has an option to calculate it with the IYER technique. Usually the default way will be this. That's why when you look at a, a horror chart, you you know, sometimes there'll, there'll be a screen in your software that shows you all your Vargas. And there'll be one screen where there's always just the planets are in two houses. They're always either they're all, they're all not ten houses empty all the time. That's because that's the horror chart. It's either in the male sun's position with they which they put in the sofa as Leo, or they in the female moon's position which they put as Cancer. The old way of doing it is two triangles. You know how we draw a square and then we put an X through the middle and a diamond, so you get twelve twelve things. Hi Giti. Um, if to do the real way to do a horror chart is the square and just one line through it, so you get a triangle, two triangles. <coughs> uh, bash, so stay tuned because you're gonna have to see how to figure out malefics also. <laughs> and Abilash, you'll see what he says about this. If they're not, you, you'll see what he says about there about your question. Right, that the malefics are self-interested. They don't, they're not sympathetic. 
Benefics are very sympathetic. Malefics are not sympathetic. Saturn, Mars, they're not sympathetic, even the Sun. Okay, so the next line, Yugme Chandram Subheshu, Dyuti Vinaya Vacho, Hridya Saubhagya Yukta. Benefics in female signs and the moon's hora indicate elegance. Some of the words are interesting to translate. Elegance, eloquence, lovability, beauty, and contemplative intellect. It's got a much longer list here than for the malefics. So for benefics, if you put them in the female sign second half, ah, sorry, female sign first half, then you'll get them in this ideal condition where they're in a female sign in the female half of the sign. And that's good for benefic planets because femininity is benefic, masculinity is malefic. So benefics in female signs and the moon's horror, they indicate what? It's very, very again, very simple, organic. And, and obvious then the feminine qualities are going to become very powerful and strong and opulent and you're going to have wealth via these qualities and or as these qualities and the qualities the first one is duty duty means all of the words basically could mean beautiful but they all mean beautiful with a different in a different way duty mostly means that it's refined and polished polished a great word a great english translation for duty would be polished so you'll have refinement or polish if you have benefics in this correct hora and then vinaya vacho means to have eloquence but it literally vinaya means deference or humility or care and vacha means in how you speak. So they'll have tact. Benefics and benefic horas, you know, benefics in female horas and female signs at the same time will indicate eloquent speech, tactful speech, careful speech, thoughtful speech, um, not brash, assertive, or arrogant speech, feminine quality. Ele elegance, eloquence. The third one is hridya. Hridya, again, it means lovability. It means beauty, but it means lovability. Hridya means a heart. Hridya means something that takes your heart. So it means lovability. But it also means something which pulls your heart. It doesn't push itself into your heart. It pulls your heart. So it's like a shyness or a emptiness that pulls you in. So it's not like a loudness or fullness that's pulling you, that's overtaking you. It's a some a mystery that pulls you in as a virtue of being shy or quiet, pulling you in. So that's Hridya, lovability. And then they say Sobhagya. Sobhagya is basic blessing that is given to women when they get married. Sobhagyavati. And there's so many stupid tr understandings of what it actually means, but the real basic organic definition of what it means is may you be beautiful. So bhagyavati, or may you have bhaga, which means may you ha may you be wealth, may you be beauty, may you be fortune. So basically, so bhagya means beauty, and it means wealth as well. So you get beauty and wealth not from the malefic way of being a calculator and a, a taker but in the benefic way of you're kind of draw you're drawing wealth to you you're drawing attention to you and the final thing he says is yukta yukta means to have thoughtful it, it means to be intelligent right but it means to be to have it not a rash decision making process not a strong quick impulsive decision making process that's the quality of males the quality of females is to not be rash in decision making 
but to be contemplative about the decision making that comes from having benefics in female science and female horus. You get contemplative intellect. So that this technique, regardless of how much of a miracle drug it is or not, it's actually very, very interesting just for revealing the basic strengths of male and female in everyday life. And also, it's just very simple. It's nice to see how simple and organic the real ancient astrology techniques are. So, so far what we have is malefics in male signs and the sun's horror indicate power and wealth gained through toughness and strength, while benefics in female signs and the moon's horror indicate elegance, eloquence, lovability, beautiful and beauty, and contemplative intellect. Does that sit well with you? Tata wants to know how is it possible that Rahu and Ketu are in one house because they're 180 degrees apart. So if, for example, if, if Rahu is at one degree Aries, then Ketu is going to be at one degree Libra. So they're both going to be in the first half of a male sign. So they're both going to be in the sun's horror. They're both going to be in male horror. Doesn't it make sense that in women or feminine characters, having benefics is going to equal more money? So I think Giti is saying, do you see female people benefiting more from having the female dignity in D2, while you see male people benefiting more from having the male dignity in D2? I haven't done enough um, research to say. Also, I'm just telling you again, this is not like a like a snapshot technique Ernst Wohm calls them where you can just do one thing and get like, oh wow, I understand this situation. It's part of figuring out dignity. You would expect I would expect that that would be the case, that like beautiful eloquent people would have the D2 with benefics and this thing, but actually it's kind of more subdued than that because it's just a calculation of dignity and i think it's more like this this type of person can earn money through people wanting their product when they have the benefic dignity in d2 whereas when you have the malefic dignity it's not like people are wanting your product but you're convincing people to buy your stuff Some of the questions I don't understand. Ruchira, if you're looking at the D2, like with planets and six signs, then you're not looking at the real classical horror. So you look in your options to see how else to calculate. Nicola says there's less benefic feminine planets than malefic masculine planets. That's not true, and I'm going to explain to you how you actually determine benefic and malefic in, in this technique. But it's not true. The malefic planets are Saturn and Mars. The benefic planets are Jupiter and Venus. So it's equal. Then you have relatively mild benefic Mercury, relatively mild malefic Sun, still balanced. And then you have the planet that switches between being benefic and malefic, which is the moon. But mild, mildly switching back and forth. Okay, then let's move on and see what he's saying in this yellow line. The yellow line says Mishre Samapalamuditam, which means, and then, oh yeah, Vyastam Vyaste, the tra, we have to cover that one, the green one, and Mishre Samapalamuditam. Vyastam Vyaste means if it's opposite, then the outcome is opposite. If it's opposite, then it's opposite. And if it's Mishra, then it's Sama. If it's mixed, then modify the results 
to reflect that. That's my translation. Samapala muditam means basically you don't really get anything. You just kind of get some moderate neutral result if it's mixed. All right. So here, so what he said is, if malefics are in male signs in the sun's horror, then the guy becomes, then the person becomes strong, powerful, and they can earn money by their ambition and their drive. But if it's the opposite, the opposite means if you have a malefic in the female sign in the moon's horror, then the opposite is the effect. So in other words, if a malefic is in the female, where a benefic is supposed to be, then you lose the ability to use that malefic quality. Similarly, if the benefic is where a malefic is supposed to be, then you lose the quality to have that female ability which is those abilities were described here. Power and wealth gained through toughness and strength for male. Elegance, eloquence, love, ability, beauty, contemplative intellect for female. That's what the green line means. If it's opposite, then it's opposite. And if it's mixed, mixed means what if you have a malefic in the second half of, of Taurus? So it's in a female sign, male hora. It's mixed. Then it's nothing special, he says. Samapala. Right, it's nothing special. So I think I'm going to show you this. Okay, one more thing. The green thing. This is like a new technique now that he's introducing in the orange line. But there's no indication that it's like a completely different technique. So he's saying if the ascendant and moon and their lords are thus strong there's long life success and no unhappiness this is a bit baffling again i don't know if i understand this rule correctly it doesn't seem to be that amazing in how it actually works but i'll walk you through my understanding of what it is so he's indicated these states this is really the important part what he's telling you is in the in the d2 you're going to get a dignity of three types like in most places you get a dignity which is either exalted or debilitated or it's a spectrum in between which is usually like six stops six different points on the spectrum and very strong enemy enemy neutral friend really good friend or domicile or military kona so you get like this that many different stops in normal dignity in the horror there's three three types of dignity you can have Good dignity, no dignity, like base, dig neutral dignity, and bad dignity. Um, and but it has more character to it. The, the dignity for a malefic gives malefic power. Actually, that's the same. And the dignity for a benefic. So the way you get best dignity in D two is to have a malefic in the male sign and hora, and or a benefic in the female sign and hora. The way you get the worst dignity in D2 is to have a malefic in the female sign in horror and a benefic in the male sign in horror. And the way you get some kind of neutral result is to have mixed signs in horrors. If you're in a mixed sign in horror, then no matter if you're benefic or malefic, it'll be a mixed result. I will now show you examples of how to use these. So Let's start with Priyanka Chopra G. Here's her chart. Here's this. Her sun is 25 degrees of Cancer. 25 degrees. Is that more than 15 or less? I hope you understand. I, even if you say you're bad at math, I hope you understand that 25 is more than 15. So that means it's in the second horror. Horrors are 15 degrees big. If it's less than 15, it's in the first horror. If it's more than 15, it's in the second horror. So her son is 25 degrees Cancer. So the Hora is the second Hora of Cancer. Cancer is a pink place. It's a female sign. So the second Hora is a blue place. It's a male Hora. So what kind of dignity are you going to get out of this? Mixed. Because the Hora and the sign are different. You see? That's how you do it. Her moon is at 13 degrees of Gemini. Is 13 degrees more or less than 15? I think you know that it's less. 
since it's less than 15 then it's in the first horror of Gemini the first oh the first horror is male and the sign is male so this might be great but this is where it leads me to explain what's this n the n means neutral so it's not a malefic or a benefic so this i kind of skipped this part the whole technique rests on the concept of malefic and benefic i've thought about it by just taking out malefic and benefic and making it male and female male a male planet in a male sign in a male horror but it's that would be my invention it's not the way that it's described in the text if you want to say he's talking about the actual malefics and benefics then he probably would not have said shuba he probably would have said somya and also he it doesn't make any sense because there's three planets that aren't really malefic or benefic the sun the moon and mercury so how do those planets get evaluated in the horror furthermore if you do t testing with it the results are at least the amount of testing that I've done which isn't like extremely a lot but the amount of testing that I've done with this it didn't seem to be great to use that technique it seemed to be much better to take the clue from Shubha and mean the planets that are functionally good so use the functional benefics and the functional malefics when you use this technique so since she has it and if you want to know what that means and how you figure out that I have a video on the houses of life techniques episode one you can find it on my channel page it explains in detail how you do that how you figure out functional benefics and malefics and they're just per each rising sign there's funk planets become functionally benefic or malefic based on what houses they own and and their inherent nature as a benefic or malefic so for a gemini ascendant the sun is neutral so even when it's the moon even though it's in these two good horas because it's neutral we're not really going to give it a great um mark even though i'm tempted to with this particular example it's super tempting to say look it's priyanka chokra we'll go ahead and look at her picture look at the first house the moon is there it's got to have a great dignity but it doesn't necessarily have to have a great dignity in d2 for her to look that great there's all kinds of other stuff going on with the moon just the fact that it's the moon <laughs> and venus in the first house in gemini already explains the appearance you don't have to make everything in the world point this way some things are meant to be about other things yes she's wealthy it's tempting to say but try not to reverse engineer the theories because the amount of um clientele the amount of the research pool that you're using isn't really so big and nor is your mastery of the technique really really worth warranting you to be able to reverse engineer it, alter theories so i would resist the temptation to make something special out of the moon mercury is functionally benefic for gemini ascendant obviously her mercury is at 16 degrees cancer that's the second horror the second half so it's going to get nothing special because it's in mixed signs and horrors venus again it's in mixed signs and horrors you see second half of gemini second half of a male sign is a female horror mars again in mixed it's second half of a male sign jupiter though jupiter is in at one degree first degree of scorpio so it's in the first horror the first half of a female sign so it's in a female horror and a female sign and it's a benefic planet not only is it a natural benefic but it's benefic functionally for gemini so here's an indicator for wealth obtained through the feminine method via jupiter the seventh and the tenth lord in the sixth house the one thing that i honestly think about her 
is that she works a lot. She doesn't really post that much like personal stuff or like isn't like a Cardi B type. She's just like what's entertaining about her is how she's living it up. She's kind of like trying to be the opposite. So it is kind of a sixth house Jupiterian femininity. Then Saturn. It's in the second half of a male sign, so it's not going to get anything special. Okay, that's how Priyanka's works out. Like I said, you might want to give the moon a hundred instead. Elizabeth Taylor, the sun is at seven degrees of Pisces. Seven is less than 15, right? So it's in the first half of a female sign. First half of a female sign. Female half of a female sign. The sun, for this ascendant, Sagittarius, is a benefic. It's the ninth lord. So here's a benefic planet in the right sign in Hora. So it's the feminine way, even though it's the sun, it's the feminine way of of getting this beneficness, this good dignity in D2. So it's wealth through the sun as the ninth lord in the fourth house in Pisces. Kalzimi or whatever, like exactly tight with Mercury, the tenth lord. Moon is in a mixed Torah because it's at the second half of Scorpio so nothing special is going to happen you see you only really get something special when you have the same horror for better or worse it'll only be special if the horror is the same gender as the sign so Mercury is in the first and that's going to mean the first half of the sign it's a very simple way of doing it Mercury is in the first half of Pisces but it's neutral you might give it 100% anyway Venus is in mixed because it's in the second half of Aries. Mars is in the first half of Pisces. Her first half of Pisces is lit up. So Mars has got this good female thing going on with it, but it's a functionally neutral. So you might not give it the score. Jupiter is in... A, now Jupiter is at 15 degrees. What do you do when it's at 15 degrees? You have to look at the minutes. Jupiter is 15 degrees in 50 minutes or something. Or 15 degrees, 20 minutes. So anyway, if it's got even one minute, then it's in the next aura. So Jupiter is actually in the second aura. So it's nothing special in the aura. Saturn, however, zero. Again, with zero implies that it has minutes. So it's not in the previous sign. So it's in the first half of Aquarius. It's in the first half of a male sign. So it's in a male horror and a male sign as a malefic. Not only is it a natural malefic, well, only it's a, it's a natural malefic and it doesn't own any special houses. So it becomes functionally malefic. So she's got two. Priyanka Chopra had one. One special dignity in D2. Elizabeth, Horace, Elizabeth Taylor's got two special dignity. Or you might say four depending on if you want to give special dignity to neutrals when they get it i figured let's put in a really wealthy person a really wealth oriented person and see how they work out with the d2 the horror which is supposed to be oriented towards money Warren Buffett, look at the sun. Again, it's kind of like Elizabeth Taylor. It, it He hit the bingo with the sun. Why? Because it's in the first half of Virgo as a functional benefic. Again, he's Sagittarius like Elizabeth Taylor. So the sun is the ninth lord's a benefic in the first half of Virgo. <clears throat> Moon. Bam, he got it again. Why is Moon malefic? Well, not only is Cancer the 8th house, but it's Mool Tricona, which is more important. Taurus is the 6th house, so it's owning the 6th and the 8th. So it's functionally malefic. And it's in a male sign, Sagittarius. And it's in the first 5 degrees. It's in the 
first half. The male half of Sagittarius. So it hit this requirement of being a functional malefic in a male sign in a male horror. Mercury, you may give it points if you decide that you want to give this to neutrals or not. Because it's in the first half of a male sign. But I suggest zero probably. Venus is in a mixed situation. Being in the second half of a male sign. The second half of any sign is mixed. Mars is in the first half of its sign. The first half of a female sign. So it's in a female-female situation, but it's a neutral planet. Jupiter, first half of Cancer, has a functional benefic. The First Lord, this is really strong. The First Lord is in a good horror and a great dignity. I mean, Jupiter's in Cancer, it's exalted. And then it's in the ideal horror in cancer for wealth and it's the first lord it's not an inconsequential planet and it's in a house exchange with it with its owner and it's in raj yoga with mars and it's doing niche bang raj yoga to mars so this jupiter is really where your clue comes from that he's uncommonly wealthy another clue is from Venus in the 11th house how about his Saturn his Saturn I think is the only example that we have in here of the bad dignity because Saturn is a functional malefic mildly function mildly malefic functionally but it's in the first half of Cap Capricorn which means it's in the female horror of a female sign but you may want to um, add some finesse or sets into this and say but it's its own sign so it's not so bad so if you do give the neutral values then Buffett's got six of seven outstanding dignities five of seven outstandingly good if you don't give the points to the neutrals then it's three of seven which is still by far the most so that's how you do this technique let's see if there's any questions and then i'll show you the orange technique too not that i really understand it but just to show you what i do understand krishna's chart you can't do because we don't know degrees. What is Brian talking about? Brian, it was off topic. Any questions? Right, then I'll show you this other technique, the other part of the technique, which was I told you what the, how the D2 is done, Bash. If the ascendant, so this is the second rule. And to recap the rule, if the Ascendant and the Moon and their Lords are thus strong, there is long life success and no unhappiness. The word thus actually isn't in there. But it's, to me, it's implied by the fact that it's in the same text, even starting on this, like without a new line and without the word to or something else to indicate that it's something else. Could be wrong because sometimes they just mix, put things together just to fit things into the memorizable meter. 
but let's look at this and see what we can make of this technique the technique actually seems quite quite organic and natural if the ascendant is strong and the moon because the moon is functionally another ascendant and the lords of the ascendant and the moon are strong then the person is going to be doing great that's basically what he's saying so let's see what we can make of it with our first subject Priyanka how do you figure out the ascendant that's the one doubtful thing do you make the ascendant a malefic or benefic or what so that's the doubtful thing that makes you th me think maybe he's not maybe this really is unrelated to the horror but just in case it's not unrelated to the horror let's try to figure it out so her ascendant is at three degrees of gemini so it's in the first half of a male horror the way that i would say that you would do the ascendant with to figure out the ascendance condition in the hora is if it's if the hora and the sign are the same gender then it's good and if the hora and the signs are mixed genders then it's not special so we would say then that her ascendant is good because it's in the male hora of a male sign then to take the lord of the ascendant mercury hers is not special And then if you take the moon it may be special depending on how you want to figure out how you work with this kind of neutral planet in the aura and then the moon's lord is also mercury so again uh, you know, this this tech this technique doesn't show that she's really i don't know does it you have to compare it to 100 million other people but it doesn't seem to jump off the page saying here's a successful person that's not unhappy maybe that's true about her I don't know but the real thing is this is this is a small technique it's not something really big and overviewy like looking for a Raj Yoga or looking for the yogas and the other thing that I just want to bring to your attention is if you take this out of the context of the Hora then you'll notice that her first Lord her ascendant and her moon and her moon's lord are all married because they have parivartana yoga the moon is in gemini and gemini's ruler mercury is in cancer and moon is the ruler of cancer so they have parivartana so this principle of the ascendant and the moon and their lords being strong having nothing to do with d2 works really well for her so that's something to bear in mind when you're trying to figure out what he's talking about with this with elizabeth taylor her ascendant is 13 degrees sagittarius so like priyanka chopra the ascendant which maybe is the most important one is got a green it matches this thing the ruler of the ascendant is jupiter there was nothing special there the moon is in a mixed condition and the moon's ruler is mars maybe it has something good so it's really not that exciting if you take it off of d2 you say the moon mm, it's debilitated but the ascendant is fantastic i mean the the ascendant and the ascendant lord are fantastic unprecedentedly fantastic in this chart if you want to know a little bit about why i recently put out the video about the four most important yogas in vedic astrology and used elizabeth taylor as an example which is this this picture is just recycled from that presentation um, that explains a lot of the reasons why so in this case the ascendant is fantastic the moon eh at least from what I can see on the screen, I don't see any way to make the moon be so super special. As for Warren Buffett, the ascendant was not in anything special. The ascendant Lord Jupiter, however, is super special. The moon is also special. Oops, and that's it. So, what I suggest is to keep the whole thing focused on the the 
purpose of the D2, which is to determine how productive the person is with wealth and money. And in, if that is, if you do that, then this does make sense, these results, where Warren Buffett's going to be obviously stronger than Elizabeth Taylor and Priyanka Chopra. Any other questions? Yeah, so let's see, he had, oh, and his moon's lord is also Jupiter, that's why it unexpectedly finished. So he's really got three greens, green circles. I hope that you like this astrology channel, which is really trying to teach you the real thing, not just talk about fancy stuff but show you nitty-gritty you do need to have a little bit of discipline to make use of this is a ch YouTube channel you have to have a little bit of focus you have to be unafraid to be scientific and systematic and rational because that my friends is how astrology is supposed to be done it's not supposed to be done hocus-pocus or it's not tarot cards it's not tea leaf reading it's not about your intuition only. It's scientifically determining the picture that is being presented to your intuition to interpret. So if you're willing to do that, then you'll get a lot out of these videos. But if you, but if you want to approach astrology with tarot cards, there's definitely better channels for you. As if it was tea, tea leaf reading or crystal ball reading. All right, any questions about this technique? I got a couple of minutes. Then I got a, when I'm expecting a call from my parents. Let's see. Shirley Vick is the big homie. 12 health placement can't weaken this theory in any way. I don't know. Do you take a look at the dasha periods of the divisionals? No. I don't know what you mean by that, Katie. But you don't calculate dashas from the from the divisionals. You do look at the planet's conditions in the divisionals to figure out what's going to happen in their dashas. Alphonse, know if there's ever been a chart that I can't take my eyes off. I mean, take my eyes off everything. Yeah. But I do like uh, Krishna's chart. A lot. Never get tired of looking at that. I have seen charts that are like, oh, this is such a nice chart. I don't want to tell you who these people are. Because you might be embarrassed. They might be embarrassed, or you might get the wrong idea. Maybe the benefic or malefic ascendant is based off the Lord. It could be a good idea. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Seema. Whoops. Now, Warren Buffett is super Jupiterian. You can't deny it. For a, for a, what, what would you call him, capitalist? For a capitalist, Warren Buffett is amazingly good, good natured and spiritual, religious type kind of good guy. Amazingly. For a capitalist. Why is Jupiter the best indicator for the horror chart? I didn't mean to say that Jupiter is the best indicator for the horror chart. What I'm saying is in Warren Buffett's chart, Jupiter is his first lord and it's exalted and it's in all kinds of yogas and it's in a great horror situation. So in his case, his Jupiter is really the thing. No notes. Just you have to figure it about notes. All right, guys. Thank you all for your company. And I'll see you again in two days. Oh, would you expect 
Warren Buffett to get wealthy in his Jupiter mind. You would. But there's other good planets there, and you might expect other things if you do use other techniques. You might have to see. But you, since Jupiter is so good in the D2, you definitely don't expect his money to be going down in a Jupiter Dasha. Yes, Diana. Watch that video, episode one of the um, Houses of Life Techniques to figure out about functional benefics and malefics. All right, all. Well, see you in two days for Bhagavatam. <laughs>